It is Sunday, July 19, 2020. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Welcome to LCJ Live. Happy National Ice Cream Day. I've got Mater here from Cars 2, because if you remember in Cars 2, Mater thought that wasabi was pistachio ice cream. So that is why Mater is here. I'm also wearing this cool Muppets Most Wanted swag because the new Muppets series, Muppets Now, premieres on Disney Plus on Friday, July 31st. It's a six episode first season. I had the chance to watch the first four episodes last night thanks to uh, Disney Plus screener access for that. Uh, can't really get into a lot of opinion with that, but we'll get into some of the Muppets stuff and my thoughts on what's been happening with the Muppets saga over the years. Uh, coming up here on LCJ Live, as always, send in your questions, your comments. Uh, also, Animal Crackers. I've got a new LCJ Q&A podcast episode coming up later tonight into tomorrow with the directors of Animal Crackers. New animated movie coming to Netflix on Friday. Unbelievable story about how this movie got made and Netflix kind of saves the day for Animal Crackers. Truly unbelievable story. Tony uh, Bancroft and Scott Christian Saba, I talk with them on the LCJ Q&A podcast. Uh, new episode for that. Look for that later tonight into tomorrow. Animation Scoop Q&A for that later this week. Also with the creator of Tig and Seek, a new HBO Max animated series from Cartoon Network coming at you this week. I'll have an Animation Scoop Q&A with uh, Mike Chillian coming up later this week. What's up, Judy Moody? Thanks for being here on LCJ Live. It is National Ice Cream Day. I've got Mater. We'll talk Muppets. Also, Comic-Con. San Diego Comic-Con at home starts this week. I'm looking forward to so many panels uh, virtually. All on YouTube, all for free. So glad that the folks at San Diego Comic-Con have decided to make this all a virtual experience, a fun experience for everybody involved. So I'm so looking forward to that. Look for my coverage across my social media platforms and at animationscoop.com beginning this Thursday. Really the first panel that I'll be watching about Thursday, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific for San Diego Comic-Con. So look for all of that. All right, I watched The Muppets Show last night, Muppets Now. I'm embargoed on total opinion until July 27th, which is a week from tomorrow. But here's what I can say, and let's talk a little bit about the history of the Muppets. Obviously, The Muppets Show. You had all the older movies, and then Disney decided to take over The Muppets. And I remember in about 2005, they did like Muppets Wizard of Oz. Do you remember that? It was an ABC movie special. And then they had him appear at the Christmas Day Parade and various other specials and appearances. And then we had the two movies. The 2011 Muppets movie, which won an Oscar for original song, frankly, I think it should have been nominated for more than just the one song, uh, Darling Film. Love that movie. Have seen it a few times over the years. Sweet movie. Funny. Nostalgic. Uh, really treats the Muppets characters and the saga and the franchise really well. Muppets Most Wanted. A few years later. I like it. I think it's funnier than the first Muppets movie. Does it have the harder emotion? No, but I think it is funnier, really clever. Ty Burrell, great with the Muppet characters in Muppets Most Wanted from 2014. Now, when Disney put out the first Muppets in 2011, rave reviews from critics, but only made $88 million in the U.S. over Thanksgiving and into the holidays, and a lot of people thought, well, was it an overcrowded time? There were several other family films out during that time. And or did people just not have an interest in the Muppets anymore? Uh, and the legacy factor was a core part of, of the storyline. So I think that folks at Disney had to be a little disappointed that it only made $88 million. Nonetheless, they decided to make a sequel. Now, The Muppets Most Wanted movie was originally called The Muppets Again, because if you remember watching that first opening number, which is really funny, in Muppets Most Wanted, it's them all dancing around saying, we're doing a sequel. It's The Muppets Again. And then... It goes from the title card of Muppets again, it goes into Muppets Most Wanted because at some point during production, Disney and the creative people said, we got to change the title of this movie to Muppets Most Wanted, probably because they didn't want people thinking, it is just the same movie again, even though it's all that self-aware humor. Uh, what's up, uh, Judy Moody, what's your favorite, who's your favorite Muppet? I love Kermit. Kermit's funny. I gotta tell you though, I got a favorite character when it comes to this new Muppets Now show. Again, I really can't get into it, but a uh, certain little crustacean uh, does some nice, funny things in the new Muppets show. That is all I can say and all I will say, but uh, watch out for him on the Muppets show. So when Muppets Most Wanted came out in March of 2014, first one was November 2011, it only made $51 million in the U.S. And a lot of people were like, whoa! People didn't want to see another Muppet movie, as it turned out. Kids maybe couldn't find that rainbow connection to the Muppets, which is too bad. I think it's sort of similar to uh, what happened when Disney tried to market Mary Poppins Returns. They were like, we're going to put out dolls of Mary Poppins. Little kids are going to love Mary Poppins. 
fact is, that movie was not made for kids. It was made for the adults and the older kids who grew up with the first Mary Poppins and have had that as part of their lives. It was not made for kids. Same sort of deal with both of the Muppets movies. Even though they're PG, they're fun, kids can enjoy them, they really weren't targeted for them. So then what happened? Uh, which movie do you like better, Bean Stye? Uh, probably the first one a little bit. First one's got that emotion to it, but I really like the second one as well because it is very funny, clever storyline and elements. So then we had the two movies. So AB, uh, Disney and ABC come together and they said, all right, we can't make a third Muppet movie because the second one hardly made any money at all. What do we do? And they come up with this idea to do this 10-minute pilot presentation of a scripted Muppet series for primetime for ABC. They work on that in the spring of 2015. They show it to ABC executives and they say, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. We want it. We want a Muppet scripted series for the fall. Do it now. So they did. Here's the problem. That 10-minute presentation was, I think, about the Muppets all just together, maybe making a movie, it seemed like, working on some stuff in the entertainment industry, some aspects where they were starting to interact with humans. Fozzie was dating a human woman, if you remember that from the promos of the TV show. What they did, though, the big mistakes with the TV show were two things. Number one, they completely changed the storyline of what that 10-minute pilot presentation was. They made it so that Miss Piggy could have her own talk show, and they could just bring on celebrities whenever they want. Didn't turn out to be a good idea. Didn't turn out to be funny. Second bad thing they did was they decided to separate Kermit and Miss Piggy. They decided to have this storyline and the promotion heading into the premiere of The Muppet Show to be Kermit and Miss Piggy break up, and they're angry with each other. And this whole mockumentary style and the interview style that they were going for, that satire, did not work. The other thing was, they tried too hard to attract this show to adults again and have it be sort of edgy and even a little risque to the point where the One Million Moms group was uh, trying to boycott the Muppet Show, which was on ABC on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock for the first period of its run started off with 9 million viewers, the interest was there for week one, and then it quickly fell off a cliff. I didn't watch it past episode one. I came back at the very end to watch a little bit of the final episode. They did the first ten, and then they wanted to regroup for the next six, but it was too late by that point. I came back in, it was okay, but what a wasted opportunity. And so I'm sure the folks at Disney and APC, when they regrouped again, and they said, all right, it's been a few years. What can we do with the Muppets again? They said, we got to be really careful. This Muppets Now show is a compilation of digital web shows that the Muppets put on. Everybody's got their own little thing. So they had to be very careful that even if they're targeting adults more than kids, sort of in this new Muppets Now show, that they couldn't go down the same paths and have the same negative impact that they had on the Muppets. Uh, from uh, a few years ago. Cooley McCoolvery, I think. Something like that. Fozzie dating a human is pretty messed up. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was uncomfortable. That's why that One Million Moms group thought it was pretty uncomfortable. Uh, what's your favorite ice cream, cream flavor, DJ Rechovo? I like plain vanilla. Plain vanilla. Uh, soft ice cream, that's my favorite. Uh, Judy Moody, excited for this show. Yeah, um... It'll be interesting to see what people say about it. Again, I really can't, I am embargoed. The folks at Disney are like, you cannot say anything until July 27th at noon Eastern. But it'll be interesting to see how the new generation of kids who are checking out Disney Plus right now responds to the Muppets. There are celebrities in this show. And it'll be interesting to see how the adults who grew up with the Muppet show or even watched the most recent movies or went to the movies from the 80s and 90s will respond to this new Muppets Now show. It is them trying to be in this 21st century digital age. How will people respond to that? We will have to see. Muppets Now, July 31 on Disney+. Plus. I'll have my take next Monday, July 27th. But thank you to Disney for allowing me to screen the first four episodes of The Six Are Done. They're going to be released once a week on Fridays, uh, July 31, and then all through August, a little bit of September. So, there's a new movie coming out this Friday on Amazon Prime Video, Radioactive. Rosamund Pike, Oscar nominee for Gone Girl, a place Marie Curie, and it's a biopic on her. And this movie, I think, was released in some territories already, had some festival screenings, but Amazon for the U.S. said, we'll pick it up, we'll put it on Prime. There was a bit of a hole this week. Animal Crackers, one of the only major movies. Amazon stepped in and said, let's get a big star, big movie, Marie Curie film, Rosamund Pike, let's get it. So that is uh, available on Amazon Prime Video this weekend. I will have my rapid review of that coming at you in a couple days for Radioactive. 
Watched Fatal Affair the other night. It is on Netflix right now. Have you checked out Fatal Affair yet? Nia Long, Omar Epps. I have my rapid review of that at lights-camera-jackson.com. Did I enjoy Palm Springs? The answer is no. I know I'm in the minority on this, but uh, not a huge fan of Palm Springs. A movie I wanted to really like, but it tries way too hard and, and some of the plot elements fall apart and the performances aren't strong enough. I am disappointed. It is too bad. A film that The Lonely Island also has produced that is coming out in a couple weeks on August 7th called I Used to Go Here. It stars Gillian Jacobs from Community, also Jermaine Clement and some other young actors, kind of semi-breakthrough performances in this film. Gillian Jacobs plays an author in Chicago who goes to back to her alma mater, her uh, college, to give a talk and a reading on uh, her latest novel that she's published. It's actually her first novel. And so she sees her old professor, she sees some old classmates, some old friends, meets some new friends. And Gillian Jacobs is fantastic in this. The story is really great. The details are really something. As somebody who recently completed the education system portion of his life, uh, I could uh, understand and relate to many of the things that she was going through. I used to go here. Check it out on VOD, August 7th, and I'll have mo more on that closer to its release, but it is uh, produced by the Lonely Island team that also produced Palm Springs. They're sort of going in, Andy Samberg and his crew, looking at some other storylines that are a little more niche, a little more indie, clearly, because both Palm Springs and I used to go here are indies. Clearly, they're looking for more of those during this period of time. Uh, I, I think Andy Samberg has had a great television career and a solid voice acting career, but his film acting career uh, has never gone to where it should. It really hasn't. Popstar bombed. I wanted to like Popstar a lot. Couldn't quite get there. He did that Adam Sandler movie, That's My Boy, that also bombed. And so Hot Rod bombed. So... Yeah, he's had a tough film career because maybe people still think he's Brooklyn Nine-Nine, he's SNL, he's Hotel Transylvania, and that's not live-action film. So maybe this will do some things for him, but I wish he went in a more dramatic direction with his character and his performance in Palm Springs. So this week, Animal Crackers, uh, The Rental, also Dave Franco's new movie, and Radioactive are the big films. And as of this moment, Unhinged, the Russell Crowe movie, is coming out on July 31st in theaters. We'll have to see. I think some announcements will be made by Friday if that movie gets pulled or delayed or if other movies get pulled or delayed. I'm a little surprised some things didn't happen this week, but people are busy with a lot of stuff. Our studio's sort of still waiting, going, can we get these movies out? Will it be safe enough? Will people want to go to the theaters? All of that. Uh, there could be some big announcements this week in the midst Oh, San Diego Comic-Con at home, which I think will be big. You got panels for Antlers, Bill and Ted, Face the Music, The New Mutants, and all kinds of TV and animation stuff that I will be covering. Do you think Tenet is an Inception sequel? I do think Tenet is going to be related to Inception. I think it's going to be related to all of them. The more I think about it, the more I think that Christopher Nolan wants this movie out so badly is because he loves playing with time in his movies and in thinking about some of his other films like Memento and some of the other ones he's done. I'm starting to believe Tenet is like a culmination of everything he's done in his career. I'm starting to believe that he's taken everything he's done on every other movie and putting them all into this one. That's, that's what my gut is telling me in terms of what he wants for impact and story and, and all of that. That's my gut feeling. I do think they're related. I do think there's going to be some kind of audience relation to them. There will be some Easter eggs, um, but we'll see if it comes out August 12th. I don't know. Uh, you think there would have been some announcements by now? The clock is ticking a little bit. It is July 19th, but we'll see. There's a new blog piece I have up at uh, lights-camera-jackson.com because today into tomorrow marks eight years since the horrific uh, movie theater shooting, Dark Knight Rises, Christopher Nolan movie in Aurora, Colorado. Will studios do the Thursday night preview showings again uh, when movie theaters open up again and new films are out? And will there be cutoffs? I'm thinking there could be some cutoffs at every multiplex like, the last show of the day cannot start past blank, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Because do you really think that movie theater employees at this point want to stay into 10, 11 o'clock, midnight, 1 a.m., if only, say, four people are at a 10.30 showing of a certain movie? How's that going to impact the staggering of showtimes in all the different multiplex rooms? But my gut says theater employees aren't going to want to. If they don't have to be there, they won't be there. 
they won't want to do that. So I'm, I'm making some predictions and some analysis on that. Check it out at lights-camera-jackson.com. All right. Look for my Comic-Con coverage all week long. Happy Ice Cream Day. Check out the new LCJ Q&A podcast episode coming at you for Animal Crackers. And I'm so thrilled that we completed all six episodes of the Cinema Stories podcast with all my good friends and film critic colleagues. Check out all of those at lights-camera-jackson.com. In the search bar, type in Cinema Stories. It'll give you the page that has all six of them that you can check out. Also, visit lcj.podbean.com to catch up with all six episodes of the Cinema Stories podcast. We talk about the past, the present, and the future of the indoor movie-going experience. Uh, yeah, so check that out. I had a blast doing that. And uh, more LCJ Q&A podcast episodes on the way. Animal Crackers and Transformers. War for Cybertron Siege. I talk with composer Alexander Bornstein. That's coming at you next week. So look for my review of Radioactive Rapid Review of that interviews and all that comic-con coverage this week gonna be a busy one gonna be a fun one stay safe stay positive stay healthy stay well keep watching movies and shows keep watching everything and uh enjoy enjoy hopefully some nice weather it's gonna be close to 100 degrees here today in uh, upstate new york stay well i'm lights camera jackson thank you for watching this episode of lcj live and i will see you back here next sunday at 12 p.m eastern where we may preview the release of russell crowe's movie unhinged in theaters it'll be exciting to see what happens take care everybody bye bye mm -hmm.